Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Belli. I'm here to present on support vector machines in JavaScript. Uh, so support vector machines are a really big piece of, of modern technology. And I think they, they're not, there's not enough maybe public awareness about what they are and why all the different places that they, they play a huge role. Uh, and also that they, when you do start to learn a little bit about them, they seem very daunting, or at least they did to me at first, because there's, like, whenever you Google them, it's a huge amount of white papers that come up and a lot of math that hits you in the face. It's, if you're someone like me, it's, it's pretty scary. But uh, I found out recently that it's not too difficult to, uh, to deploy one if you have a decent data set. Right. So, rough overview of what a, a support vector machine is. Uh, it's a supervised learning tactic. Uh, given a set of training examples, each marked uh, as one category or another, an SVM algorithm builds a model that assigns new examples into one of those two categories. And this is used in, in many uh, machine learning uh, algorithms today, like most notably things like facial expressions, uh, text classification, speech recognition, or uh, any of like Google or Facebook or a lot of the things they do, this might be something that one of the, the machine learning uh, tools in, in their toolkits. Uh, it's become uh, a really big thing over the last few years, but it's existed since uh, the 60s, a guy named Vladimir Vapnik uh, is credited with a lot of the algorithms that underlie this. Um, and the first SVM, uh, as we currently know them, was uh, theorized in, in 1992. So that is some of the math. And I have no idea what any of that means. Uh, So this is something that I can kind of explain a little bit better. Uh, cats, right? So uh, the first step, if you're going to do an SVM, is identifying the features of the data set that you want to train on. Uh, like in this case, we have uh, two completely made up features that I'll, I'll say them, and then you should forget them, because they don't have anything to do with uh, training, is a cuddle factor and scratch potential. And these are uh, seven cats that have just been plotted on a, a graph uh, using those two made-up features. So the made-up feature thing, it, it's, I guess it has, it's a bit instructional in that uh, machine learning doesn't know anything about uh, whatever we're training it on. It only knows the data that we feed in. So we can use any made-up feature we want and it turns it into to data, and it doesn't have any relationship to the, the real world. I know this, uh, this sounds like obvious, but you find when people, when you talk about machine learning and start thinking about it, that maybe that gets a little uh, fuzzy in people's, people's minds, that what really happens is it just converts whatever you feed in into numbers. Uh, so this example we see here, there's only uh, two features, right? But a data set can have uh, hundreds or thousands of features. And uh, this, this two-feature data set, it's, it's a good uh, exemplar because we can display it easily. And it makes sense to all of us, x and y. Uh, but as you go up in dimensionality, you, you can't envision more than uh, three dimensions. But the things that we know to be true about this sort of thing are true of uh, uh, a feature space with any number of dimensions. For example, that uh, two points that are closer to each other are similar. And that's kind of what the whole thing is based around, is that the closer two things are, the more alike they are uh, using their features, depending on, uh, or as more similar their features are. OK, so the next step in a machine learning uh, process would be to categorize some of the data points. In this case, we turned two of these into nine cat, 
and one of them into uh, another famous cat whose name I don't remember. But uh, so this has been done. We feed this training data into the SVM. And the next, process, the next step is the SVM takes that data and it divides up all of our points using this, this line. Uh, and here the smaller icons, the smaller nine cat, other cat, those are the SVM's predictions. And what that, all that is is based upon the line that's drawn, if you're on one side of the line, you're classified as that type. Uh, and the goal of the SVM in this is to uh, maximize the margin on each side so that there's the, the largest distance between two classes of uh, two of the, the two different classes. Uh, so then the SVM would give you this data back, its predictions, and you as the trainer would then be able to say if any of those predictions were incorrect. For example, here, we can tell it, no, you were wrong. That cat was actually this cat. And feed that training data back into the SVM, at which point it would change its line and its predictions. Uh, and this is an iterative process. Uh, I only have seven here, so pretty quickly we'd run out of things to classify, but if you can imagine in a real world example, tens of thousands of, of pieces of data that it's predicting on uh, with every round of training, the machine comes to know and learn more about the data set and refine its line. Uh, yes. So what we're going to use here is uh, libSVM, which is an open source support vector machine library. It's really prolific. It's been, it's available in all of these languages. And you see the one we're concerned with is, is Node.js. Uh, and this is how easy it is. It's really just these two snippets of code uh, on the left-hand side, require and train. And this is how the, the form the training data takes, just an array, in this case, two dimensions, and then the class. Like a one would be positive, you could say, and a zero negative. Uh, this function here trains it. Once that's done, you can feed it any uh, set of data that takes that same form with tho that, those two features, and it will predict, uh, apply a class to these data sets. You see here, we train, or I'm sorry, we predict on that corpus, and the results would have uh, classes. So some of you might remember that uh, this guy from my, um, my uh, stackathon, and uh, I had tried to make it so that I could uh, grab a, a chunk of pixels and, and recreate them, and my efforts were not very successful, and a little bit after the presentation, it occurred to me what I was doing was really like an SVM problem, or is like ideally suited for SVM. So in a pretty short amount of time, I was able to, to use that, and now it's, we get better results. It takes uh, a bit of time. This isn't really SVM's fault, but uh, and this one down here is the SVM version. And you see these are the two, the two earlier attempts that were not as good. You can see here, it pretty much draws that, it has that line effect where it finds all the things we selected, and if you're on that one side of it, you're included, and if you're on the other, you're not. And uh, that is the end of my presentation. Does anyone have any questions about support vector machines? Thank you.